right, welcome back to Smoke and Spill, episode four. I'm your boy Kaleo. There's my man, Big Mike. We are back at it. Did you miss us? Mike, what's <laughs> going on, bro? Uh, what's going on? Same old, same old, man. You know, ready to ready to get into it, man. Um, you know, haven't really been up to too much, man. Had the Something in the Water Festival recently. Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, hey, man. So, so tell me about your experience with the Something in the Water, I mean, I... I didn't get to go. I I, did, I chose Dreamville. Uh, I could do one or the other. Did Dreamville? Uh, so tell me about. I know you always do something in the water. What was your what was your experience like? Well, it was my first time down in Virginia Beach. Uh, I went last year when it was in D.C. Um, you know, Pharrell had a had a slight beef to work out, man, and you know get the festival back down in, in Virginia Beach. But uh, apparently that happened really quick because only like two or three months after last year, last year something in the water. Yep. He, Already announced, hey, we're, we're going to be back down to Virginia Beach. Tickets went on sale. I locked it up, you know, immediately, man. Was, you know, <laughs> well, I was my man, man. I, I got to support him, man. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Um, so, man, I, I actually had a really good time, man. It was um, the atmosphere was good. The weather didn't, the weather would really didn't hold up that well, but the atmosphere in general, general was real chill, man. You know, on the ocean front. Everyone's there to see a good, 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 good performance, man. Not just from Pharrell, but from all you know, from the whole lineup. Um, but good vibes, man. Good food, drinks. Um, you know, all up, man. I still have had a really good time, even though you know the the weather wasn't quite cooperating properly, you know. But uh, Absolutely. still had a good time, man. Still planning on going again next year, whenever that may be. Due to the weather, you know, he 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 pretty much um, well, Pharrell pretty much put out a message saying, hey. Definitely not gonna have it at the end of April, so you know whenever, yeah. whenever next year's dates are are, are, are set, man, I'm, I'm definitely planning on being there again. Absolutely, I gotta I gotta catch one of these. And like you said, I remember it was it was here in the DMV, DC uh, last year. It was a huge uh, event when they announced it. Like that was that was big. He was bringing it here because of the the mm -hmm. beef that he had going on in the hometown. Um, and then I just remember. I didn't. For first of all, this year I, I was trying to catch some of the streams. I didn't see. I don't know. Maybe the streams weren't there because of the weather. Like they just didn't have the the Amazon setup, or maybe it was already predetermined they weren't going to stream the festival. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I remember it was here in the city last year. I just I stayed home and watched it. Uh, but then I remember, like you said, shortly thereafter, it was. Look, we're back in VA next year. Thank you, DC. But we've taken this back home, and I I had to yeah. have thanked that the city. They, first of all, they had to have done right by him from the one to take it back, but then they realized the revenue that was not being made in that that small town that he with that festival. So yeah, it was a huge deal, man. Because you know, I was you know on the days of where it was raining down there, man. I, I looked at all the local news down in Virginia Beach, man. It was it was all about something in the water. It didn't matter what else was going on. Yep. You can tell that hey, that that event was was a big money maker for the entire town. Yep. Um, you know, they you know, they had twenty almost twenty four seven coverage, man. You could turn the news on in the morning, mm -hmm. afternoon, night. They had people, you know, boots on the ground, man, right there, something in the water, just just seeing how, you know, what was what was taking place, who was performing. You know, it was hitting the, you know, you can you can tell that it was really hitting the local economy economy like in a good way, man. So it, it's just unfortunate that pretty much a day and a half of the shows got uh got canceled. Yep. But um but hey, man, you know, I think it's going to be bigger and better next year, Absolutely. man. And we'll just have to stay tuned, man. I remember. So I did Dreamville. Um, and I know Raleigh is, again, kind of just kind of like the Virginia Beach area, small town area. Uh, it was the biggest thing happening in the area at the time. Every every news channel had local coverage. Every little uh, hotel had, you know, specials. You know, you know we've got, you know, we're. we're two miles from the Dreamville Festival, where, you know, Dorothea Dix Park, we're close, blah, blah, blah. So, and I know those small towns, those are big generators for and getting revenue. So, shout out to those guys for doing those festivals. And last question about the festivals. Mm -hmm. Are you one of the guys, when you go, do you post up at one stage or do you do, you do the travel back and forth to kind of see? Because they all, they're good. They alternate mm -hmm. like good acts between the two stages most of the time. Right. I, I pretty much just um I base that based on who's performing, you know. If you know if, if I luck out, 
and everyone's just performing on one stage. I was just stay there like all day, you know. Yeah. But the way they, they they do that on purpose, they, they try to wow. put big acts against each other. So you have to make that decision. Like, hey, you want to see Lil Wayne or you want to see Pharrell and Friends? You want to see Wu Tang or right? You know who else, man? Right. Um, but uh, so I kind of you know. If you know, if the person I want to see is is like the is like the headliner at the end of the night, regardless of who's performing on the other stage, I'm like I'll I'll pretty much lock in a spot, maybe a couple performers in on the main stage, just so that when the when the main when the main event does happen for the for that night, I have a really good spot, you know. So yep. that may mean you know cutting out someone that I really want to see in order to see the uh, to see the big event. Yep. At the end of the night, so always a tough decision, though, man. You know, but definitely that's how the festivals get you, man. You that's know? how they get man. Look, yeah. Uh, so Dreamville's a two day festival. So Saturday, the headliner was Usher, right? So, but you know, so Saturday was the day I did the back and forth, and you're talking about a straight shot from stage to stage is probably about a, a football field and a half length, maybe less. But the way fest- this festival is set up, like you have to walk, like it's like around. There's no straight shot because of barricades and all that. So after the first day, my legs were shot anyway. But I got to see both stages. The second day was Drake. Cole and Drake were headlining the set. I we got there as soon as the gates opened, and you could see people just camping out. Like these are the people that are not going to move all day. They've got the spot. They're going to stay. And I sacrificed all the second day and stood in one spot. I was like, I'm going to miss Jid, even though I just saw Jid in concert. I'm going to miss Boss. But, you know, I can I, I can do without. Um, so a cheap, you know, a, a, a cheat at most of these festivals is always the guardrail. The guardrail can aid, can aid as a seat. Uh, when you're standing, it can be something to lean on, so you're not using all of your body weight. So I found me a good guardrail spot, super close, stayed there for <laughs> nine hours for the payoff. Yeah, man, that's that's how you do it, though. I mean, that's it, man. I actually had a I had a guardrail spot for the Pharrell and Friends night, but I had to use the bathroom, man, and uh, so I left. And then, um, but I, you know, I knew I was gonna lose my spot, and I'm and and I think I was only like maybe two performers before the Pharrell and Friends started, which was oh. like the main event for that night. So I was like, man, you know, I'm too it's too close to too close to the main event to you know get that same spot man so luckily man i actually had a um, that's right had a okay. spot yep you know i had you know, you know my, the condo airbnb condo i had man was right there right there on the road of front man so i just i went back to the room man and i watched everything from up there, there man it was, it was super cold that night man and um <clears throat> you know i had a, I had a few drinks in me man and i was just <laughs> like oh man it, it definitely caught up to me man and uh but uh, yep. I'll be ready, man. I'll be ready next year, man. But I love y'all, man. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to lock that same spot. That's dope. Next yep. year, man. So we'll see if I'm able to get lucky on that part. But that's dope. Book that's it now. Oh, you don't know you don't know the date. I said book it now, but you know the date. That's the um, thing. Yeah, if it was gonna be the um same 28th through the 30th, I, I would totally lock it in. But yep. no yep. one knows right now, so we'll see. Okay. So I got another important question for you. What are you smoking on tonight? Oh man, so tonight, man, I got the uh passion fruit Ooh. sangria from uh Fumari. Never had this one before, man. Not really sure how I feel about it right now, man. It it doesn't really remind me of sangria. Like it it almost has like a um almost like a floral type smell to it, but mm-hmm. uh so far it's it, you know it smooth. I mean it, you know it's it's all right, but I'm not sure if I will. Put put it up there in my favorites right yeah, now. Yeah, so, I got you. I got yeah. you. So I'm I'm hitting on the Famari as well. I got the summer sorbeto, uh, which is actually pretty good. Uh, I didn't mix any mint tonight. Uh, typically, sometimes I throw in a little bit of Famari sweet mint with it. Tonight, it's straight up summer sorbeto, and it's good. Um, mm-hmm. And I realized the other uh, a couple weeks ago, I went to a hookah bar, and I think we had a conversation about hookah bars, but like I like trying new stuff. And the first, I realized I don't like things that are flowery. There are a lot of 
tobacco shishas out there that have like a flowery hint. Mm-hmm. And I got one. I it the it sounded good, but when I got the flavor palette going, I was like, oh, this is this tastes like a flower, and I I, I couldn't get with it. Like it just makes me sick. I, I want to get sick from it. Uh, yeah, man, I, I I feel you on that, man. I, I'm I'm thinking this is shaping up to be kind of like that, man. But I'm you know I'm only a few minutes into it, man. We'll we'll see we'll see how I'm feeling by the end, <laughs> end of the show, man. <laughs> Right, exactly. so far, so good, though. I'll be able to tell how many pulls you take throughout the, throughout the episode. That's it, man. That's it. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. Tonight, we are going to review Todd Rundgren's Something Anything. And this is one that my man Big Mike uh, picked out. That you, I, was, I knew you had it. I knew you had it. This is this is Big Mike's uh, selection right here. So let's get to it, man. Look, um, I'm going to hit you off. With some of the facts, we'll get through it. Um, <clears throat> and I, I think I was, we talked about this off air, but I'm going to put it on air. I think it was actually good that we we did this one because I think there's going to be a couple of differences in opinion for certain things. But I think ultimately, I mean, the way we love music, we dissect similar. So, and, and hopefully you'll see what some of the things I have to say, you'll get why I say some, uh, the things that I said. So let's start it. Todd Rundgren, something, anything. Released February 1972, uh, a few few years before I was brought into this world. Um, it was recorded in late 1971 uh, in L.A. and in New York. This was Rundgren's first double album, which explains a couple things to me. Um, Three quarters of the album, Rundgren plays all of the instruments himself. The last quarter of the album, uh, he actually recorded without any overdubs. Album peaked at 29 on Billboard 200. Certified gold uh, after three years after the, its release. Hello, It's Me, top five in the U.S. in 1973. Liner notes describe the first side of the, the, first side of the album as a bouquet of your catchy melody melodies, the second side as a cerebral side, the third as the kids get heavy, and the fourth is titled Baby Needs a New Pair of Snakeskin Boots, a pop operetta. Okay. So that's that's some of the liner notes. That's some of my notes. Uh, and then I got a couple more. The length of the album. 90 minutes and 33 seconds. Yeah, it's definitely a long one, man. Right. Definitely a long one. Yeah, you so, know, but yeah. Yeah. So 90 minutes and 33 seconds. And mm-hmm. that when I saw that, even before I listened to the album, got me a little intimidated on the project, right? Because 90 minutes, if you look at it. Is three 30 minute albums technically of what people put out nowadays. Mm-hmm. So, and I, and I think granted, I, I mean, I'm not opposed to long albums, but I think like now the mindset of uh, people who record these days is the shorter, you know, short attention spans. And I got to get you within 30 minutes to an hour before you, before you check out. And most time these albums don't reach albums an hour is 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Right. So, um, so yeah. So what I I figure we do because let me let me let's, let's go through this real quick. Let me look at it. Uh, my notes say there are twenty five tracks. Twenty five. It's, it's definitely it's definitely a deep one, man. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, you know, I guess I guess what what I, what I really love about this album, man, is that uh. You know, it, it is so like versatile. You know, it. You know, Todd. If you know Todd, if you listen to some of his other albums, man. This one, and there's a, there's a couple other albums too, but this one was like the first one where he he kind of just delved deep into all different types of like, you know, types of you know different different genres of music, man. He, I guess, you know, when he was putting this together, man, he was uh, he was on speed, man. He was on. You know, he was smoking a lot of weed. You know, he was just 
that, that's the mystery. That's the, that solves the mystery right there. Yeah, it was a big, you know, you know, he, you know, he kind of embodied the guess the '70s spirit when he was putting together this album, man. And it definitely, I think it definitely shows, man. Especially when like you find out that he was, you know, on speed the whole time. It makes sense that he would want to, yeah, you know, uh, basically eliminate the use of anyone else doing any of the instruments. He wanted to do everything himself. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, he had this this creative vision, and he just put it together, man. And I think. I think without the earthquake, man, it was an earthquake that hit the uh, yeah I think LA. LA studio he was working on, and he moved and to New York, New York, where he actually had he was kind of forced into, you know, having other people provide instruments and everything on the album. I think if it was fully tied, man, I think you would, I, I think you would have an even better album, man. But who knows, man? You know, there was no, as far as I know, there there, there, were, there weren't any unreleased tracks from this that came out later on this is what you see is what you get man so absolutely yeah so you have the vinyl how many vinyls do you get with that oh man i think there's actually two let me double check man but i think there's two because there's a there's an a side b side there's a c side and d side man so i think all together yeah, there's two. There's two, two, two vinyl just in here, side. man. Yep. So, yep. Uh, yeah, man. But they're just, they're just long, man. Long. Yep. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> when you put the needle down, man, you really have to count which ring the track is on, man. Because like <laughs> one, you, there's so many rings on there, man. You're yep. like, oh man, where do I where do I drop this at? So. <laughs> Exactly. You know, but uh, <laughs> we'll skip through a few to be like, oh yeah, this is the track I'm looking for. So exactly. So you know what? I think about like the the luxury of vinyl. One vinyl t- still probably has the the best sound out there, right? I mean, digital platforms can try to clean up something as much as they can, and you know, throw these filters on or processors on, but vinyl just still has that 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 authentic that authentic sound to me. It seems like. Um, oh yeah, so definitely, definitely. I'm gonna tell you how I dissected it. I mean, because this you you've already you had already heard it, um, and you probably had been listening to it because I had never listened to it prior to, so you probably had had some time with it. So, mm-hmm. and here some of my early my notes have changed throughout, but uh, <laughs> I said um, so the, I, I dissected the time, and then I said I um, I, so I listened to it all the way through, without notes, no nothing just to listen, put my mindset into l- listening to music, new music. And uh off the original listen, I think I got through yeah, I got through I didn't I didn't I didn't take any days off. I listened to it straight through uh my commute to work because my commute to work is about that long anyway. Um and so when going back in, knowing I had to remember certain songs or start writing the notes, I said um Try to put myself in a mindset of enjoying the music and not about it dragging on because mm-hmm. of the, the 90 minute thing. Because right? your mindset already already gets there. And I'm speaking that because I know for anybody who decides to listen to it after this show, they're going to be intimidated by times. So don't be intimidated by time. Put mm-hmm. your mindset in the mind of instead of listen, learning new music and listening to new music. Okay. Right. Um. Okay. So I I wrote down each track and what I felt as I was listening to each track two times around. So we can, I was trying to figure out the best way of doing this. I mean, I, with Elton John, with the Captain Fantastic, went through track to track. So I don't know if you if you have your notes on how you feel about each track or as as I talk about each track, you can tell me how you feel or which one stands mm-hmm. out to you, which one your favorite. All right. Right. So let's start with track one. Uh, I saw the light. And then uh, I put good opening track, could get into the groove easily, lighthearted guitar melody. I uh, love the song. A guy finally seeing the light in his eyes. That, that was my, my, my note on that. Um, and then when I went back to listen to it again, it, I think that is one of the ones I, I've frequented a couple of times. Anything stand out to you about that track, the opening track? Opening track is always. Yeah. I, think, I think I saw the light, man. It's probably. I think it's out of that A side, man. It's probably my favorite. Um, you know, 
A sides and B side, I guess when you know when artists used to put out, you know, records and and, and even cassettes back in the day, A side was kind of like supposed to be like your standout track or the track you're hoping that's going to make like the radio. Yep. You know, but and I think I saw the light actually did chart. I'm not 100 percent sure about that, but um, that was my favorite one out of the A side. It's not my favorite track overall, but. Um, we have to go to the B side, and so once we get the B side, that, that's when I'll identify like one of my favorites. If I wouldn't say my top favorite, but probably my second favorite, right on the B side. Let me flip it over. Okay. So tell me, since you have <laughs> the breakdown, the sidewise, because I did digital streaming, it's all one. They don't tell you the sides. What track? Uh, as I go through tracks, tell me when side A stops. Okay. Yeah. And, so then, and we a, transition over. A is gonna stop. At cold morning light, so gotcha. I think there's basically well, I can't really say one side has the same amount of chat. So a, it, well, actually a stops at it takes, actually a actually stops at sweeter memories. Sweeter memories is all of a, and okay. then b's gonna stop at I went to the mirror. Yeah, let me just yeah so. Okay, yeah, yeah. So there's roughly, um, roughly at least five or six tracks per side, man. Okay. Uh, C has oh, five right. tracks. D has seven. A has six. B has seven as well. Okay. Then we get into. Uh, it wouldn't have uh, made any difference. Mm-hmm. And I got a uh, super catchy. Love the melody. Feels like the song is about a guy. Who got caught cheating? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I definitely agree with that, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm in top, man. I, he, I guess he just, you know, he had a lot to let out with this album, man. So, yeah. Oh, there's more. Okay. And then I says, uh, caught cheating is one won't take him back. And then, um, song has a weird shift at the end and fade out. Mm-hmm. So that was my notes on that. Wolfman Jack comes in hard, catchy hook. Dance groove for sure. Wolfman Jack makes me feel like this is a guy is a rock. He's a rock star or super popular. Something that the Fonz would walk into the the room with. Room to. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like, right? <laughs> yeah, man, it definitely got together had that vibe, man. Um, you know, I, you know, a lot of the songs, man, it's is just so uh, it's just so kind of out there, man. It. It really doesn't. A lot of the tracks, man, it doesn't even feel like it's 1972, man. It sounds like he's kind of projecting, you know, out there past mm-hmm. past the 70s, you know what I'm saying? But that, that's just how that's just how Todd Rundgren is, man. That's, you know, if you listen to some of his later um, albums, man, he, mm-hmm. he kind of puts some, you know, he kind of just does his own thing, man, without any regard to <clears throat> like what. What what is like the 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 standard for that particular yep. time period, you know? So that's this is how he is, man. And, and that's one thing I I, I got my notes is as I appreciate an artist being an artist. You don't care, you know. You're not yeah. necessarily making music for anyone else but yourself, mm-hmm. and you know, just hoping that people catch on to it. Um, okay, cold morning light. Uh, lighthearted music, couple of melody shifts. Uh, not many notes in this song, but a solid track. Right. Um, it takes two to tango. Uh, <laughs> uh, catchy hook, uplifting, solid groove. Yeah, I think that was that was plain and simple. I, th- I really like that one. Uh, Sweeter memories. This is track six, by the way. If you guys are keeping right. up, um, comes in strong. Guitar playing. Ballad put me in a mindset of over- overcoming a storm. Overcoming a storm. Yeah. That's yeah. What- <laughs> All right. I should have I listened to that one last weekend, man. You know, as uh, tornadoes and monsters <laughs> through, uh, Virginia Beach. Yeah. Okay. So then now we're on track seven, and we finally get the intro track. It's called intro track seven. Yeah, intro. yeah, yeah, man. He just threw it right there. Um, <laughs> honestly, like some of his other albums, man, are like heavy into like skits, intros, and stuff like that. I'm not really a fan of that at all, man. I mean, you know, this one he doesn't really do it 
that much. You may hear something maybe at the end of one song where it kind of leads to another song, but mm-hmm. this one's not that bad, man. He has another album. I think it's the actual self-titled the Todd album where he does a lot more skits, man, and I'm, I'm not really a fan of that at all, man. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, there's definitely skits on this one too. Um, so, yeah. in, uh, intro. I got uh, very interested uh, in an intro track. Uh, seven songs in, ends up being uh, him talking. He begins teaching about sound. A lot of bad editing and uh, mastering sounds. Yeah, so- yeah, yeah. That one. I mean, that particular <laughs> intro, though, man. I, I thought it was. I thought it was kind of funny, but at the same time, <clears throat> that also kind of explains who we who he is. Um, he's, he strikes me as an artist that doesn't really like any outsiders coming in, you know, to kind of yep. tell him how to do things, man. He, he's very, uh, just kind of stick to his own style, man. And um, <clears throat> even when I think he was inducted into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame recently. And um, even that, man, he, he didn't even care, like, if he got inducted, like he he was like, yo, I, you know, I don't, I don't really care about this ceremony. I don't think he yep. spoke or anything at his actual induction. So, yeah, he's this is how he is, though, man. That's Todd, yeah. man. So I've, I've read, like, a couple of things. People wrote about him, and he's just one of those guys, like, he doesn't want the accolades. The accolades. He just, I'm me. I play music. You know, it is what it is. Okay. Um, and I think this one, if I remember correctly, intro sets up some of the things he's trying to tell you to listen for throughout the album. Cause it feels like he's laying Easter eggs. Like he's telling you all these things to listen for in albums and he just places them strategically throughout the album. <laughs> I think that's what stood out about this one to me. Yeah. Um, number eight, breathless, um, instrumental, very cosmic spacey groove. Yep. Um, oh, number nine, uh, the night the carousel burned down. Uh, then I put at this point, I'm learning he uses uh, interesting sounds, a cluster of sounds. Uh, then I would have put, uh, yeah, nothing, you know, nothing more than that. Just so I'm, I'm learning about the sounds throughout at this point now, nine tracks in. Mm-hmm. Uh, 10, uh, Saving Grace. Uh, uh, the, 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 the voice at the beginning threw me, uh, threw me the hell off. <laughs> Uh, that's what I put. Then, uh, then it says. Then he goes into a countdown and a piano riff. Uh, ends up being a love ballad. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I like the way it ended. Like the, I think the very beginning definitely threw me off, but I, I, I think it came into something different. Right. Uh, Eleven. Marlene. Straight to the point. Uh, Marlene, do you care? I care for you. Uh, and Marlene, do you care for me? I care for you. Uh, uh, a love confession for Marlene. I put I've I've written songs like this. <laughs> hey man, like Marlene, man, that's um I was I would break that as uh my second favorite on the entire album, man. I really liked I really like Marlene, man. That's, I got a star by this one. Yes. Been a, it's been a favorite of mine, man, for for a long time, man. And you know, it's that song, and I will say all the way, I believe it's on D, man. Well, we'll get there, but hello, it's me, man. I'll put that as, as my number one favorite for a number of reasons, man. But Marlene, man, definitely number two. <clears throat> Everything, man, from start to finish, man. I think it's just like a it's just like a beautiful song to me. Yep, yep. Um, track 12, Song of the Viking. Uh, put Sounds like a bar song. A uh, bunch of drunken sailors getting together, clanging mugs and singing. That's the feel hey, I got from. That's yeah, that's <laughs> that's it, man. That's that's it, man. If I I didn't really discover Todd Rundgren until uh, way after I had left the Navy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But if I was still in, I would definitely expose my, uh, my fellow <laughs> mates, man, to yeah. uh, to the song of the Viking. You know what I'm saying? We play that, man. Before we yeah. actually while while we're out, man, be like, yo, man, play that, man. You know what I'm right. saying? That's, 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 a, that's a song, man, to get drunk to. <laughs> In the middle of nowhere, man. And that's what it felt like. Uh, 13, yeah. uh, I went to the mirror. Um, <clears throat> what did I put? Uh, oh, so I said, certain points, couldn't understand what he's saying. Uh, the piano overshadows the lyrics at points. Uh, song picks up with the guitar. So I think this is like, 
the mid tier. Like we're midway through the album almost at this point. And I mm-hmm. think like it felt like we were getting ready to get into that cluster of things, perhaps not being able to dif- differentiate the tracks. Uh, and I, with this one, I don't know why I didn't have more notes, but it says I couldn't. I think what really stood out is his his, his lyrics were just almost inaudible, but the piano was louder than the lyrics. Right. At least yeah. on a digital platform. Now, if I hear it on vinyl, it may be different. Yeah, I, I think it, it may kind of sound similar. Um, you know, I, I didn't look too deep into the background. I just, well, so I don't know exactly at what part of the album was it, you know, the LA base LA, the New, yep, yep. or the New York side. So I don't know which tracks actually, you know, um, has like other artists doing the instruments besides him. So, um, you know, I'm kind of curious, you know, what songs that really would affect, you know? Yep. Uh, 14, Black Maria uh, comes in strong. Sounds like a Pink Floyd, a Bad Company track. Mm-hmm. Uh, break down with guitar riff. Uh, uh, yeah, break down with the guitar riff. Makes the, uh, the track catchy. Uh, actually, a normal track. Uh, second half of the song's straight groove. I got a star by it. Uh, standout track. Yeah. Oh, which uh, which one? Black which Maria. One was, uh, Black Maria. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Got that as a standout. Okay. Yep. Uh, number fifteen. One more day. No word. And I just put right here. Uh, nothing really stood out. Mid mid tier of the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, sixteen. Couldn't I just tell you? Uh, rock groove. Feel like we've reached the midpoint here, yeah. Uh, and some of these are running together, so I got I think I got that for a couple of these three right here. I just said 17 torch song, piano out and vocals. Feels like he's singing about carrying on a legacy of loved ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 18 uh, little red lights, guitar pitch bend, super heavy, uh, giving me a Hendrix vibe, giving me energy back into the album, guitar solo at the end. Uh, then back into uh, then the back end of the song was really good, so yeah, I, it, we're, we're picking it back up. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm finding my way, okay. Like, we feel like we're wrapping up the album again. I said, I, I remember writing the Hendrix note because it definitely stood out as far as like, okay, we're here with the guitar now. Um, mm-hmm. the, the old steno pad, let me see where we're so that was 18, 19, uh, overture, my roots. Money uh, seems to be a PA recording. You can hear those bad editing spots. Then it switches mm-hmm. to a completely different song. Then the song, uh, the, 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 this song must be a plant, meaning it, it was a plant from what that that intro track. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I bet, yeah, that's a good. I didn't even put two and two together, but that, I definitely I, that, I can see that. Yeah. Um. Here we go. 20. Dust in, dust in the wind. <clears throat> Off the break, the song feels different. The vocals feel different. The hook feels different. The horns feel good. The song feels complete. Guitar sounds right. Uh, by far my favorite song. All right. Interesting, man. Dust in the wind. All right. Dust in the wind. Right. Any any yeah. takeaways for you on that one? I mean, I, I, will, I will probably rank that as three, maybe four, you know, but that that D side, man, I, I think, I think stood out. That was probably my favorite side out of all all four sides. I think if I think if maybe maybe D was one. If I was back in 1972, I would put D as A mm. and just swap them out. Of course, you know, put like the intro where it's supposed to be. But I like D out of all the other sides, man. So you know, like you know, piss Aaron, hello, it's me. You know, some folks is even wider than me. You know, like <laughs> those. Ones. Yeah, I would, I would, I would put them all as one man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Cause, you know, you know, because you know, even the even the the titles, the titles of those songs alone, just I don't know, just makes you want to yep. hey see what it's about. You know. So let's get into that. Twenty one, piss Aaron. I uh, got piss <laughs> AA raw, and I says uh, yeah. feels yeah. feels a little gimmicky by the hook. Uh, but the song feels super personal, and it sounds like he someone he knew at school. Right. Uh, twenty two, hello is me. 
catchy groove definitely feels different i love this track um singing to a, definitely singing to a girl that he wants um are they gonna say oh what are they gonna say think of me but no i got a double star by this um definitely between this one dust and the wind i think these were my mm-hmm. two standouts that i that i took home that i've listened to since i finished the review right and then we've got uh 23 some folks are even wider than me i was like super catchy hook aggressive vocals uh great mid uh great groove so yeah man definitely uh hey like i said man this this side man this side stood out to me man and um yep. You know, um, you know, I, I think Hello It's Me, you know, it, I only knew the song, you know, from the Isley Brothers, you know, that that's the first that's the only Hello It's Me I thought existed for a long time. I, you yep. know, I was, was, you know, late 20s before I found out about this version and this one actually came out first. So I was like, oh, man. So but, you know, I guess, you know, it was pretty common back then to have artists cover other songs yep. to market you know um you know different de- demographic you know so they did you that still with see the, it now in pop music but I mean, yeah. back then it was just like it was very common to have what maybe like a white version and a black <laughs> version and yep. the black version is what all of us knew you know what i'm saying and then you know the white version is all what you know the white you know white people knew so you're like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> you know, this isn't the original. This is not the OG version. This right. is like, white guy wrote it. Like, right. oh man. So, didn't we see that in the uh, Five Heartbeats? Wasn't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was definitely in the Five Heartbeats. You know? and, <laughs> but it's, uh, it was common. I mean, it was that. That was that was that was just how it was back then. Yeah. Uh, track twenty four. Uh, you left me sore. Uh, mind you, so I've read all the tracks mm-hmm. before I started listening. I was like, that. Can't wait to get to that one to figure out where we are with it. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, oh, constant restarts. Uh, one of he's recording this in real time. Uh, song about a breakup and a heartbreak. Uh, says no good ever comes from love. Good pocket groove. Mm-hmm. And then twenty five. The infamous, <clears throat> the infamous slut. <laughs> yeah. Slut. Uh, funny banter to kick off the track. Uh, slut. She may be a slut, but she looks good to me. Good wrap up, groove track. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, Todd, man, he pretty much. I think as long as this album, as long as this album was, man, you know, ninety minutes. I think he. I don't know if he did it on purpose, man, but. He kind of covered all the different types of music that were kind of popular back then, man. He yep. kind of had the, you know, with Hello, It's Me, kind of hit like the Motown soul. Um, he, you know, I think that may be an early version of what, you know, I guess was established in the 80s as like a, um, as the uh, Blue Eyed Soul. Yep. You know, so I don't know if he was one of the first, but that one kind of, that one's definitely in that category to me, along with, you can probably put that into you know blue eyed soul, maybe even maybe to a cent, maybe maybe even yacht rock. Who knows, man? But but he kind of you know he covers Motown kind of in in this album. I mean, uh, I'm like psycho, you know, kind of like psychedelic type music. Out of psychedelic, of course, you know, he was kind of under the influence when he was doing this. But pop music was what was pop back in the '70s. I mean, a little bit of rock, everything, man. He just put it all out there, man. Uh, real quick, uh, I've talked about him on the show, and I'm, I'll give him a, a spot because maybe you know you never know one day this may you know we may get get a little kickback. But uh, these are the Pharaoh coconut quick light coals I've been talking about. Oh man! They, All right, they even got the hole in the middle. Um, so, so when they say when you, when people say quick light, man, how how long does it actually take to heat up? Just uh, literally when I just I put the torch to it. Yeah, uh, and, and it automatically sparks, and then I'll give it maybe two minutes mm-hmm. before you get through all like you know the the chemical burn to get to actual coal. So typically, so hold on, I, I'll give you an example. Hold on, let me you gotta throw that on so I can 
Luca was was getting ready to go light. So that's you know that's in a in a quick in a quick setup. But then on the long side setup, I've got the Coco Nara. You know, that's, that's my go to man. Yeah, that's... This is this is my absolute favorite. So, mm-hmm. so those pharaohs are just like this. I mean, because it's the coconut, right? The mm-hmm. Three Kings are trash. Sorry, the Three Kings, but we're not. I'm not looking for no money from Three Kings. But uh, <laughs> Coconara. For sure. Anything I felt coconuts is a lot cleaner. But these ones right here, you definitely need. Uh, I got the burner because my my torch. Man, I'm putting out all the stops, so everybody knows I really, my torch won't get through the coconaras. Uh, it's just they're so so thick. They're like rocks. So you yeah, yeah. Have to man, have a, a gas. Man, you gotta <laughs> you gotta really have a decent uh, solid burner. Yep. To get through that, man. Yep, and I've got a. Um, I've got the the burner. You plug in, put the top off, put it inside, and let it kind of let it. Someone like a uh, a slow cooker, <laughs> just let right. it cook. But uh, yeah, no. So back to the album. Yeah, I, I feel you. Definitely psychedelic. Uh, and I think a lot of the research I did after I listened, it's kind of like I, I didn't. I like to get into the project of the movie without any reviews or anything that might spoil or uh, taint my mind mm-hmm. at the beginning. So. A lot of the research I did afterwards makes sense, like with the the heavy drug influence or the uh, the shifting the studios or not wanting to re- uh, record other musicians. It makes sense to what I heard. I was like, okay, you can tell the guy, this guy made an album by himself for himself, mm-hmm. um, and didn't care what he put out, and that's not right. that's not a bad thing at all, you know. So you could tell, and one thing I appreciate about it was for the freedom. Like you can hear, even if some of the stuff I necessarily didn't didn't catch me, you know, I, you can hear the freedom. One thing's for sure out of that whole project because I don't think he was trying to impress anyone. He did what he wanted to have to what to, one to put the intro track at number seven, and then to to use that track to show you like sound like sound advice or things to listen to throughout the album. Like it, it was interesting. So yeah, right. Um, we covered one of your favorite tracks. Uh, how often do you visit this album? I would say, man, I I probably visit it. Uh, probably visit it like once every quarter. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. you know, but you know, I I have I have this album in my phone, man. So if I'm just shuffling through, you know, a song may pop on. I'm like, oh man, you know, I haven't heard this in a while. You know, and then I'll I'll start playing it, man. But uh. I would say like once every three months, man. I'll, I'll listen to it, man, and and kind of revisit, you know, and and check out some of my favorites, man. Marlene, definitely. Mm. Um, but yeah, man, you know, I, you know, it's just one of those one of those albums, man, that I can I can listen to, man, and and just kind of just kind of chill out to, man. You know. Got you. Yeah. Um, are you giving this the classic title? I, I, yeah, definitely. I would give it a classic title just because it's to me it's it's, it's a very original album, man. I mean, even in, in today's standards, man, you really don't see an artist, um, you know, put out something so long without like an influence of like a a record company. You know, he kind of just did everything on his own, man. You know, he didn't have someone like telling him like, oh, all the songs need to be pop or all the songs need to be. Motown sounding like or psychedelic, he kind of just kind of ran with his own uh, agenda, man, and yep. <clears throat> that's what I love the most about it is that uh, even you know even if you look at how long the tracks are, I think you know back in the seventies, man, especially in the pop or like maybe classic rock or somewhere in that realm, man, tracks were a lot longer, man, and, and you know it, it, yeah, he has a ton of tracks in this one, but you know three sometimes four minutes I'm, i don't I think i'm looking at it there's only a couple of there's a couple of tracks that are four minutes on here but for that era man you yeah. know tracks were easily like five six minutes man so he was able to cut it down yeah he has a bunch of tracks on here but i, I think in a way <clears throat> although the album itself i would say probably wasn't super successful i think it was I think what makes it classic, in my opinion, is that it's more of a influence. It's it's an influential influential album, 
Gotcha. I'll put it that way, man. It's just like it's something that you kind of I can kind of look back on and be like, oh, well, you know, Todd did it this way 50 years ago. You know, um, when someone says, like, hey, you know, I've never seen a guy do all the albums, you know, you may bring up Prince or yeah, whomever. Be like, well, Todd, you know, Todd did this way back in the early 70s. You know what I'm saying? And kind of kind of set the bar for future artists to kind of do their own thing. Play their own album, play their own uh, instruments, and put together a masterpiece in their own in their okay. own right. So, is this your favorite Rundgren album? This is my favorite uh, Todd album, man. I have a couple of others that I actually did collect the vinyl for because I do like them, but this one's my favorite one out of all of them. Gotcha. Okay. Um, how many? Let's let's go ahead and give it the rings. How many rings are you giving? Um, like I said, man, I'm, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it five, man, just because. Just because, like I said, man, I, I I think it's a. I think the versatility, uh, you know, just, just the originality of it, man, kind of, kind of just kind of speaks for itself. Um, I don't really know too many albums on that level, man, that, that was put out around that time, man. So I, th- I think it's yeah. because it, it kind of stands out, you know, just because of the artist's creativity. I'll give it five, man. Okay. <clears throat> Great. <coughs> uh, so, my opinion has changed from the first listen to the last listen to breaking down some of the facts about the album and all that. Uh, and one thing I can appreciate about music and artistry is freedom, right? And mm-hmm. not being afraid to be yourself, regardless to if anybody else likes it or not. Uh, you you do, you're doing something that you love to do. Um, so, and and I hate to put myself in a spot mm-hmm. where like I, I I don't have an answer right now if it's a classic because of just how much time I've spent with it or, or haven't spent with it yet. Uh, ended up being, you know, through all the intimidation factors of 90 minutes, 25, 26 tracks, um, some of the, you know, the weirdness, you know, the, the weirdness in, in the album, uh, ended up being an album that I enjoyed. So, and then I, I was, I didn't do enough time to figure out like, what else did it compare to at the time? Like what else was was a was what was his his peer group amongst the time? I mean, assuming it had to be a Pink Floyd, it had to be um, Bad Company, or uh, I mean, I'm sure like those group Aerosmith. So amongst that peer group, I mean, and then play all those instruments himself is, I mean, it's a hell of a, a feat, you know, one man band kind of thing, right? So when he travels or when he if he tours, he has to trust other people to play the instruments. That he played through. I mean, that's that's kind of like the Prince factor, right? right. Um, but yeah, I can't give it. I don't know if it's a classic yet. I haven't. I got to spend more time with it, and then maybe one when we're reviewing another album, I'll have an answer about this one. Where I always revisit. Um, ring wise, okay. I battled back and forth again because I'm going. It's just my in my honest opinion. I knew I wasn't going to give it a five. Just. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't there for me. Uh so then I, I toyed between the three or the four. And I, I'm gonna go with the higher end. I'm gonna go with the four because of all the other factors into it that I just talked about. Without doing research, it was a it was a three to me. Uh and that's just off of one or two listens, right? right. Uh but doing the research and just knowing the history <laughs> and the knowledge and just you know what it was, I'm like, it's definitely a four. I mean, that some of the um, the attributes or some of the the side stuff has to play into them as well. So, gave it a four. Um, I'm definitely gonna spend some more time with it. Uh, cause I, I've got at least three or four that, that have the stars by it that have made it onto my rock playlist. So, you know, when it pops up, I'm de- definitely listening. Um, yeah, so. Trying hey, to think. Is there Definitely. anything else when you Okay. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, man. Yeah, I, I was expecting you to give it three, man. You know, I know Todd, man, he's um he's more of a more of an acquired taste. I'll put him that way, man. Uh, but uh 
you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I definitely appreciate the, 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 you know, actually listening to, you know, from track A all the way to D, man. Nah, and, look, and, that's why we're doing this. That's honest, this, opinion, this, is, yeah. this is what smoke and spill mm-hmm. is all about. And I'm, I'm glad I, yeah. that's why I wanted to stick stick with reviewing it. It took us a while to get to it, but I wanted to stick with it because I knew there were some differences in opinion here, or it would be, or be a different take. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I, um, so if you haven't, if, if anyone hasn't listened to this album yet, check it out. You can find it on your streaming platforms. Um, yeah, Todd Rundgren's something, anything. 